Tom here from Lawrence Systems. This is the Unify Protect NVR. I really like this product, so it's gonna be uh, a positive review, so save you a click if this is all you wanna know is do, does Tom like it or does he think it's a good product? Yes, I do. We'll get into the details shortly. Uh, it does have the four dry charade, which is awesome. It runs the Unify Protect software. I wanna answer two questions up front and get them right out of the way because this is frequently asked. What other cameras does it support besides Unify? None. I do not expect, and right now in June of 2020, I do not expect them to ever support more than just Unify cameras as part of keeping everything within their ecosystem. So that is something to take note of, whether that makes you like or dislike the product, at least you know up front. Second, what about running the Protect on my own hardware? Not support it, not officially. Could you figure out some workaround? Maybe, way out of scope of this video, not something I plan to spend time exploring. The Unify Protect software is designed to work on the Unify hardware that was designed to run Protect. So it's a essentially a closed ecosystem where uh, this device supports the Unify cameras and that's it and you don't run the software anywhere else. So if that has either made you wanna watch the rest of the video or stop right here, at least I saved you a few clicks and uh, let's get started on the video, but first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. So right here from Unify's website, this is the Unify Protect Network Video Recorder. And SKU number is UN. VR. I've seen them called the UNVR4 because it does have four drives in there, but it's not part of the official SKU right here. And uh, it's $299 right now is MSRP on here. I'll probably be able to find it uh, cheaper at some point in time, but $299 is actually pretty reasonable for the capabilities of this device. Uh, it has four, it supports two and a half, four, three and inch hard drives, one 10 gig SFP port, one one gig port. Uh, it's one U rack mountable. Kit included, hardware included for the Mac, the rack ears and everything. So that is uh, all included in there. Plug and play Unify system. I will actually say yes, they did a good job of making it really simple uh, to set up. Automated, secure, RAID 1 or RAID 5 configuration and supports USP, RPS P for PSU failover. I actually, when I did my review of the USP RPS, I tested it with this particular device and just like it says, it fails over. If you're interested in what that means or how that works, I'll look up the USP-RPS and I have a video on that and showing it work. But let's take a look inside and then we'll show off the software. Now, despite it having these three fans, it's actually really, really quiet. Uh, I never seen this and we've only got four cameras on it, so we know, I know we're not loading it up too much. I didn't hear it get loud. I do like that the fans are standard four pin fans. So I can just pull these off if I need to replace them. So we have one fan connector here and the other two right here. So if you ever have a fan go bad, they're pretty normal fans. There's your uh, 10 gig. That's the port for uh, plugging in the USB RPS. One simple heatsink, no plenum or anything on here, uh, nothing in the case, so it just pulls air and goes this way. Uh, power supply here, and this over here is not much to look at. It's just the cover for the uh, drives. We'll get to those in a second here. The other thing that's interesting though and of note is this right here, if you can't tell, it's just a USB plug uh, with a USB thumb drive that has been glued in. So thought that was a little interesting. So instead of, you know, system on a chip with some type of solder on drive, I'm assuming they've just decided to use this instead, or maybe it's for reloading. Um, but it's glued onto there. It's not something user serviceable, user replaceable, and came exactly like this. thought that was a surprise, I should say, when I opened it up. Now let's talk about the drives themselves and the sleds that they have. Now you have these four drives right here in the front, and it's all toolless. There's also no locks, so I'll mention that. So they don't lock close, they just clip in and out. So yes, someone could just go, hey, we. On notes of the drive itself though, uh, or the sled I should say, one, they have the little Unify logo on them. They have a little light in front. They are, this is metal. This is not cheap, chintzy. Um, it's got a plastic cover, a metal bracket right here. And the way they're loaded, so I'm gonna pull it, it's kind of tight, but this, is toolless. And what we do is we have a couple little nubs right here and then a little flexible part. And it's kind of hard to look at the overhead again. 
this is flexible right here to lock in the drive. Now we have, if we're putting it in with a two and a half inch drive, you're gonna to have to use some screws and there's the screw holes for a two and a half inch drive. If you're using a three and a half inch drive, it has the little nubs or you can put at least one screw here and a screw in the bottom that will line up for the two and a half inch drive. I didn't use any and taking the drives out is a little hard, but taking, putting them in, that's it. The drive's in. So uh, satisfying click and very secure. The drive doesn't wobble. It's not, matter of fact, there's no play at all. Once those little nubs lock in, like I said, we can put a screw here and screw here to lock the hard drive to the sled. I, they give you the screws to do that. I found them completely unnecessary. Uh, in terms of doing this though, it just works. It, it slides in, it's fit and finish. Like this being metal here, all the slides are not like some type of plastic. I just think they really did a nice job for something uh, like this. I kind of expected, usually you see those cheaper plasticky sled trays. Maybe you got to wiggle them a little bit and they slide in. This is just straight up uh, well-made. And it's not like even when you slide them in, it pulls the drive the rest of the way in with there. So uh, I just think they did a nice job engineering. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but at least I think that's important when I see uh, nice design work or quality workmanship put into something. Uh, it is worth mentioning. Other than that, let's look at the back of the system. So looking at the back, there's that RPS plug. There's your 10 gig that comes with a cover in it, your one gig, three fans, power cord down here. Now of note, and I like that they come with a cover in there and cool, Unify, you've stuck your little logo on there, but unless you got some fingernails, um, that doesn't come out easy. So I, I like the, there's a reason there's pull tabs on most of these little 10 gig ports, uh, so they're easy to pull out. But I mean, not impossible, but just a little side note. Um, if you have to get that out, make sure you either have some fingernails that you don't trim short like I do, or ability to get that out, minor detail. Uh, front, well, you've seen it, just the four drives, nothing nothing really to look at on the front of this thing, it's pretty plain. But that's actually nice, it all fits in a nice one you package. Now let's get into software, that's the important part, uh, showing it working. I will mention really quick though, something you didn't see, and it's not an oversight, there's no power on button for this. And I bring that up, it does power on automatically when you plug it in, but when you go to power it off, uh, there is a power off shutdown option in the menu. Um, the only way to get it to come back on is you unplug it, plug it back in. And you're like, oh, that sounds like not a big deal, Tom, until you do a review with the USB RPS and you have to unplug it, plug it back in with both devices in order to get it. So uh, once it's kind of like in shutdown mode, until it sees a power cycle, it will not, uh, it will not come back on. So you have to, if you have that, if you are using that USB RPS system, you have the power cycle both. Just a side note. All right, let's get the cover back on and log into the software. So first thing you do is you're presented with the setup options. You go through and you either have to create or log into your existing Unify account. Now, something of note, I have not tested if there's any workarounds, you don't tie it to a Unify account. It will prompt you for the year two-factor authentication and it ties it to your Unify account where it shows up in the Protect app automatically. So these are nice features of it. And if you ever want to detach it, yes, there is a way to reset it. Once you've done all that, we're presented with this right here. The Unify Protect app is the only app that you see once you log in. And it's interesting because it feels like they could put more icons there and maybe they will in the future. This will not run the standard Unify software defined networking controller or any other software as of right now in June of 2020. Maybe in the future they're going to do some uh, more things with it, but for now that's what it does. You have a manage users over here and in settings. Now settings you have check for update and it does this automatically. This is a nice feature of Protect, the fact that it has, you know, auto updating features, automatically updates the hardware. Uh, it's extremely automatic and we've been using Protect for a little while, which I will be doing a separate review on. I've been really happy with it. Hardware is listed down here. It gives you some stats about CPU load, CPU temp and memory. The RAID, the RAID is just automatic. Uh, good and bad. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where it just works. It makes me really happy. The downside is it just works and you don't get any control over anything. You can't like play around with settings. You basically get RAID 5 when you throw the drives in. And uh, it does expand. I started with three drives and then I added one more drive and then it expanded, added one more. I've also ejected a drive uh, so it, you know, simulated a fail and it had no problem letting me know there was a failure and rebuilding another drive that I put in. So all the rate testing went perfectly fine. I found it very easy to use. I have not tested this. I was told by many people on Twitter and in some forums that you can actually swap them out for bigger drives and it'll auto expand. Have not tested it, but um, that might be a feature that it supports. Now, what 
exactly is it using behind the scenes? This is still running Linux and it's using MD ADM, your standard Linux RAID manager software RAID. Uh, it seems to work quite fine and it's very responsive. Here's your options for the IP configuration, DHCP, fallback IP address, uh, fallback net mask, and then go down here. That's where your SFP is. Now I realize it says SFP and it is an SFP plus port, uh, but I did notice they Maybe it's just a typo here that it just says that. So no big deal, but just so you know that if you're setting up the SFP, it's a separate configuration. So you can use either or, but it does not have any speed options on it. It's labeled SFP, but it appears to be an SFP+. Plus. Applications, this goes back to me thinking maybe they'll add something more later, but yeah, they have Unify Protect here and no other application options. Location, uh, it does have the option to set location. This is part of a geofencing option built into the Unify Protect software. So you can have alerts sent to your phone based on uh, your proximity to the device and your phone app can look at that. Now we have SSH turned on, we have remote access turned on so we can SSH into it and uh, restart the device, power off. And like I said with the power off option that the only way to power it back on is to power cycle it. Uh, download support file, offer factory reset. Now, like I said, really straightforward in terms of options. There's not too many other things you can do with it, but it works. And that's actually kind of the beauty of it. Uh, there's very, very little setup work. And once you get into the actual system right here, this is the Unify Protect software. Um, it's different than prior where you loaded it off a specific port. I'm doing this locally, but it does work through their cloud interface as well. But when you go into it, it's slash protect. And if you notice right here, it's slash settings versus when you go all the way back here, that's where you get this main landing page for the system. Uh, we still have, and I did a review on this, the UFP viewport works perfectly fine on here. Uh, we have view time lapse for any of these. And one thing about this particular system, it is really responsive. There is definitely no lag, no speed issues. Uh, when we jump to cameras or anything like that, it's noticeably faster. Using standard, I have four one terabyte spinning rust hard drives in there, nothing uh, high end. Matter of fact, they're West, a couple of them are Western Digital Blues, and one of them is a Seagate. They're mixed uh, drives. So it's kind of a mix of hard drives in there, nothing real impressive, and no problems. Like uh, this is the uh, 4K camera right here, the Tesla Nanny Cam, as we call it. And uh, it's instant. So if I want to watch something on there, well, I'll switch it to 4K actually for the view here. There's no delays. It works great. Uh, no issues. So overall, I've been really impressed with it. Uh, it's Here's an event from the other day. Move myself down to make it a little easier to see. The same options with Unify Protect. If you're not familiar with it, you can just download the file, watch the video that way. Also, the time-lapse feature works really well by comparison. So this was always a lot laggy when I was using the cloud key for this. This just works fast to be able to roll through all the events on a particular camera and go, all right, you know, let's time-lapse this particular camera, take a look at it and jump around. It's just slick. I was, like I said, it pulls the video really fast and is able to, you know, jump through these events, which is just, I don't know, it's a really slick feature on here. I really am liking to protect. And like I said, I'll do a separate review on there. So my overall thoughts on the device though, it's worked great. We've only had it for about a week that we've been using it. I got messages from other people, uh, have said they've been using it for a while. They really like it apparently probably since it was in beta. My overall feelings though, uh, solid device. The Upsides to it are the ease of use, the ease of use for a client. And this is something I can't emphasize enough. The Unify software for Protect is just way nicer than even some of the more expensive ones we buy in terms of ease of use. And this is really important because it's not about having just a recorder that you can use as a more technical person, but also that your clients can use. So I think this is an interesting way forward. The downsides, it's proprietary. You're locked into the Unify ecosystem when you do it. But then again, for some of the uh, people, that's going to be perfectly fine, and that's not uncommon for them to have, you know, companies that have kind of a lock-in ecosystem. There are no license fees for it, so there's another upside to it. So once you buy it, you own it. You're not continuously paying some renewal fees on it. Um, the Protect software over time has actually done really well. Um, back to the slight downside, though, um, as long as they produce it and they make it, it's great. But if uh, these 
devices ever go out of style or whatever. Obviously, um, there's not any easy way to get the videos or any of the details off of here um, and easily onto another system. You can export them all individually, but I didn't see any way to easily mass escort, export the videos out. Uh, but overall, it's it's been a solid system. I've done a bunch of random unplugging it a bunch of times. I wanted to see if I could break it, and I didn't. I will note, when you're setting up the RAID, and I did format and reset the RAID a couple times, just like it has on there, it probably does take about 10 to 15 minutes to get rebuilt and start doing its thing again with Unify Protect. I bring it up because at first I thought I had broke it and was going to have to do a factory reset, and I wandered away for a few minutes because after about five minutes, I lost patience. After about 10 minutes, I noticed it just started working again. So it doesn't really, when you're rebuilding, it doesn't have like a little progress bar telling you. So um, it's not probably something you're going to do often. Now, when you just eject a drive, as in I didn't erase in format, but just do a drive rebuild, it just keeps working. Uh, that did not cause a fail on it. So if I were to reach over and eject a drive, which we'll do as a demo real quick here, uh, we'll pull it up on live view here. We'll switch it to all cameras and I'm going to reach you can see it actually behind me. And we've now removed a drive from the system. <laughs> and I'll show you the, uh, the message that you'll get for this. So we've removed the drive, which doesn't protect, doesn't make that message. It's going to go here to settings. You notice, and I'm doing this all in real time, what we'll the wait a few minutes, and then it'll give out the error. It doesn't do it absolutely immediately, um, but it will. It'll error out here, and we'll figure out exactly how long that takes. All right, I did fast forward just a little bit. It's about one minute that it took. If you see it was 9.41 and now it's like 9.42. So there's probably a 60 second delay and uh, you can see your array is in a degraded state, but all this works perfectly fine. I can still go through the events. I can still go through and uh, playback videos. Plays back perfectly fine. There's me coming into the office carrying some junk. Uh, so no issues there. And as far as rebuilding the array, pretty simple too. We're just gonna go ahead and put this drive back in. And after a few minutes, I'll start rebuilding the array. So uh, there's a watching it on video of me testing the failover. I actually, last time I tested, I swapped it with a different drive so it would rebuild from a clean drive on there. Um, and that's about it. I will note when you put drives in RAID arrays, uh, if, you, well, if you're like me and you've got a lot of drives laying around and you're testing things, do make sure to erase them in case it has a problem. I don't know of any issues if you have data on the drive already, but generally speaking, uh, as I've run into this before with some RAID arrays, if they see data already on the drive, or especially if it was a, another project we were working on, it also had RAID, you may end up with some issues. If it sees a signature on there, it may not want to delete it right away. So save yourself in trouble. Always make sure the drives are erased before you're putting them in just to uh, save any issues with that. But as far as RAID rebuilding, um, it doesn't take long. It'll, after a few minutes again, it'll start rebuilding it and tell you once it's healthy um, and you can SSH into the system and get the status on the particular drive. So you can see here it popped up healthy. We're going to go ahead and log in. MD3? That sounds right. Yep. So it's actively recovering. Now please note this is actively recovering down here it is a raise in a degraded state still, so it doesn't really give you any progress to what it's doing, but it does here tell you if you go to the command line, um, it tells you that spare rebuilding and you can get more detailed status. I do like that it's Linux, and because we only eject it for a minute, it's done rebuilding already, so that went rel relatively fast. So pretty straightforward there. I do like I, said, I do like that it's running Linux. I do like that they let you SSH into it as well. Uh, for those of us that want more technical details about what's going on and effort to goof around with it a little bit, but I don't guarantee that any changes you make in here will survive any type of updates to the system. I don't know if it preserves uh, extra things that us people who like to play around do to it. So my final thoughts on the Unify NVR does support up to 50 cameras, does have a lot of connectivity. I think it's a good product overall. I love the ease of use of the Protect software. I like to see where they're going with this, hopefully, and I don't see any reason why they won't. Hopefully they do continue this product line and uh, keep it updated and keep enhancing features on it. It's probably one of the easiest ones I've seen though that you can hand to some of the small businesses or home users that go, hey, I want a nice MVR at home. I don't want to have recurring license fees and I want something with a pretty easy of use interface. I'm going to say the Unify Protect system combined with this particular device is solid. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and 
Let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.